Ken Burns is with us now, along with John Miller, who covered this case as a very young reporter. Lady became an NYPD deputy commissioner. I'm pleased to have John back and Ken Burns here. This is a different kind of film for you. It's different in one way. Uh, I made it with my daughter Sarah Burns and her husband, the filmmaker David McMahon. Uh, there's no narration in this. It has a relatively contemporary feel. It's still history, recent history. But it's the same old, same old, Charlie. We've, you know, dealing with race again at the heart of our story of our nation. Thomas Jefferson said all men are created equal, but oops, he owns more than 100 human beings. So whenever you scratch the surface of American history, you're going to come up against race. And the suggestion is that you have crossed the line into advocacy. Well, <laughs> that's ridiculous. This is the, probably the straightest and most journalistic uh, film we've ever made. There's no narration, so it doesn't give us a chance to do anything. We've got, um, you know, one adjective in our in our uh, you know interstitial ca ca cards that says brutally, referring to the rape, which is was. But other than that, what happens is is that these kids were never allowed to have their humanity brought forth. They were wilders, they were part of a wolf pack, and all we said was, who are you? Mm -hmm. Who are you? But, but, but before we get to that, why won't you hand it over? Well, I, I already just, taped it. Yeah, I, well, I just think it's a part of journalism. It, it, these, are, these are our privileged conversations. If the state, every time they want to delay something, and let's remember, this civil suit is nearly 10 years old. Mm -hmm. After 13 years of justice denied, which everybody agrees, there's suddenly now justice delayed, which we know is justice denied. So we're, we don't want to be a, a part of the city's mm -hmm. fishing expedition, uh, going after material that's not material to this particular suit. We made a film about them. We talked to them. We think it's a good film. The Cannes Film Festival does. Telluride does. We're opening theatrically, which is unusual for us. What does us. the NYPD think, John? Well, the NYPD did its own internal investigation, which found that none of the detectives did anything improper. That was done by a former prosecutor, a former deputy commissioner, and a, and a couple of other officials. The district attorney's investigation um, reinvested the case, uh, found that they probably had the wrong people. But when you get to the detectives, Charlie, the detectives say, why weren't we interviewed in the DA's investigation? Why was no, no witness interviewed? Um, they still believe that these kids had something to do with the assault, and they don't believe that they fed them lines or tricked them into confessing. And they're very frustrated that they weren't allowed to be part of the film. They wanted to tell their story. And, and, and we did ask consistently repeatedly to, 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 there is not a detective on this case who doesn't say they didn't call 50 times and we would love and we would love to have them involved but the adding probably did this is not right let's remember that Robert Morgenthau assigned two new DAs to this to reinvestigate they produced a damning 58 page uh, report that said that mistakes were made not just by prosecutors but by the cops and it's not probable they asked and joined with the defense to, uh, to ask a judge to vacate the conviction so here's what what the final story is about what happened that night with regard to the rape. Maybe there are other things up in the air, but what happened is is that these kids were innocent and they didn't do it and they spent time in jail for a crime they didn't commit. And now 10 years later, in the midst of trying to document this, in the midst of trying to release the film, in the midst of the kids trying to get on with their lives, they're men in their 30s now, the city of New York somehow takes this time to decide that they're going to throw a monkey wrench into our process and say, oh, give us all your stuff. That, mm -hmm. that, that's what seems. This is a, a scar on the city of New York. John. And, and, this and, could the, be and the detectives this could be would come back to each one of us had more than 20 years experience. Each one of us had investigated scores of assaults and murders. And nobody in the process of the reinvestigation sat down and said, what happened that day? What's your understanding of this? What occurred? And they, they really believe that the fact that the cities had indemnified them. They said, if you lose this lawsuit, you're covered, but you're not allowed to talk. But, but so they're all upset of their... that they're barred from talking, and they're upset that not just the documentary, yeah, but we... they're upset in the investigation they didn't have their say. Yeah, but the, you know, when we talk about all this experience, it, it's not unreasonable that they'd want to think that these kids who were out in Central Park had anything to do with this brutal rape. We want them to be involved with that. But you'd think their spidey sense would go off for a thousand different reasons, that they didn't know where the crime had taken place. They were in some other place when it did. It was an incredibly bloody crime scene. There's nothing of the crime scene on the boys. There's nothing of the boys on the crime scene. They didn't know each other. They spent all this time in prison not asking for parole. I mean, when they went up for parole, not saying I did it so they could get out earlier. And when the f and film, I have to say, and Charlie, you know this, is a kind of um, 
polygraph. Yes. You read it after a couple of hours. Yes. We go in and we let you decide. And you see these were good kids, that but they hadn't done it. They, they had no criminal record, but yet they confessed, Ken, and you said in your documentary that once you confess, that trumps everything. That trumps right. DNA, that trumps evidence. But let's talk about that. The, we want our detectives to be really good at this, to ask really tough questions, to lie and try to trick. But these are kids, 14, 14, 15, 15, a developmentally challenged 16-year-old is going to be tried as an adult. Look, Gail, we know you didn't do it. You're a good kid. But Ken, and you say, who's Ken, is saying that you did do it. Yeah. If you, we think he did it. We can make him for it. If you just say that you saw him do it, it's a circular firing squad. We'd all end up in jail. And then, of course, the confessions trump everything. So here we are, 13 years later, the truth comes out. The truth comes out, and now we have another 10 years where we're still arguing about it. This, Mayor Koch said at the time, Mayor at the time, was the crime of the century, filled with all of these undertoes of American history, like race. The language of the New York press at the time was the language of the Jim Crow press of the early 20th century and late 19th century, not of a progressive city, and we have a chance to heal this. Why are we not going, moving swiftly mm -hmm. towards some sort of closure and justice. Not just closure for the five let and me, their let families, me get the last word but closure John, for the in city. In terms of where we ought to go and where we should go and why we're not going. I mean, to me, as a journalist looking at this from soup to nuts, the shocking part is that the city hasn't settled the case. Right. I mean, yes. what, whatever the final story turns out to be, the district attorney has joined in the motion and said they didn't do it. So the idea that they're stretching this out over what's approaching a decade is, is stunning because it in the end, is probably only going to cost them more money. Yeah, in, in the documentary, you point out that the innocence did not get the attention that the conviction did, and you certainly seem to be trying to change that. Your, pa your passion is very, very clear. Well, you know, what happens is, my daughter Sarah said it best. She's been studying this for so many years. She said when it was done, she was outraged. Yeah. And we hope that everyone who sees this film or hears about this case is outraged. And so it's going to open theatrically, and then it'll be on PBS next year. And we want everybody to look at it and see how far the inability to admit a mistake can cause can tragedy right. in the life of people and cities. Because you this have is the last song. word on that, Ken Burns. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know you could go on. I know you could. We could have several parts. <laughs> yes, we could. <laughs> Ken Burns and John Miller, we thank you. The Central Park Five opens in theaters next Friday, the day after Thanksgiving.